Hello, I'm Mal, and this is War Machine Tactics. War Machine Tactics is a steampunk tabletop game and roleplay game translated to the computer, obviously. Uh, it's brought to us by Privateer Press. It was originally kickstarted back in 2013. It moved to Steam Early Access in the summer of 2014 and released finally in December of that year. I am recording this at the beginning of May of 2015. The game has gone through several different iterations and patches and seems to be relatively stable at this point. Uh, it is important to note that it did release to some mixed reviews, I think because there were some issues. Plus, fans of War Machine didn't necessarily feel that it translated from the board to the computer in the exact manner that they would have wanted. Uh, which is not uncommon for computer games, you know, some things that work well on, say, a board game don't necessarily transfer well to the computer. The question is whether or not the computer game itself is interesting, and I hope to answer that for you in this video today. Alright, so here's what we'll do. I'll just go through the menu here, and then we'll get into the introduction of the game. We'll talk a little bit about the game world. I will go through the very first mission of the single player campaign, and then I'll wrap it up with my thoughts about War Machine tactics as it stands now. All right, so let's see here. So you obviously you have the single player campaign. You do have multiplayer that's built in. So that's, I guess, quite common for people to play multiplayer with it. And I can see that that being particularly fun. So I, I don't know, maybe I'll try to find some some other people that like War Machine tactics and see if maybe I can get into some multiplayer action. Skirmish match is if you want to set yourself up with your own squad against the computer. I've done this a few times. Um, and I found it to be uh, interesting, um, and I don't know, maybe it was just the way I set it up, though, it was exceedingly easy for me to win. As a matter of fact, I thought it would be harder versus the, the campaign, but so far I'm finding the campaign missions more difficult than, say, the skirmish. So, I don't know if that's just my becoming more familiar with the game and having a lot of experience with uh, tactical turn-based games like this one is, um, or what, or maybe that the AI needs to be stronger, but skirmish matches so far really haven't been a big issue for me in terms of winning. Um, I'd like them to be a little bit tougher, so I'll have to explore that a little bit more. Uh, again, I mentioned this already, squad construction. You can go in and build out your squad. Um, presumably, you would use that to pick for either skirmish or multiplayer as you see fit. Various options here include graphics settings, audio, kind of your standard deal here. Under gameplay, you can choose um, a couple of things that are kind of interesting. You can have it remove the bodies instantly, which I don't want. Um, you can have it set up automatically to, uh, if you go out, instead of using a single move, you can use two moves to essentially run or dash. Those of you that have played games like XCOM will be familiar with that system. This will let you run out without having to confirm that. Um, same thing with intern. You can just have it automatically rolled on the next turn when your actions are done. So again, just little gameplay tweaks. See, do as you see fit. You can adjust the camera. You can have the action camera on or off. Follow with activations. You can have it. Um, you can have it zoom scale depending on what you want. Uh, I currently have mine set to two. I think the default is two point five. You can just again play around with it to see what you like. And then you can open the logs directory. I've never done that, so I have no idea of the the worthwhileness of that. Key bindings, you can change things to whatever you want. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the intro for the game. Um, and then we will do the first the first mission of the single player campaign. This tribunal has convened in accordance with Signarin military law to assist the ongoing inquest into the unknown whereabouts of Commander Dalen Sturgis during and following operations in the Southern Thornwood region, conducted the third and fourth week of Ashtoven this past year. Lieutenant Journeyman Allison Jakes, you have confirmed under solemn oath to His Majesty, King Leto Railthorn, that you were the last person alive to have contact with Commander Sturgis. Before we proceed, please state for the record your relationship with the Commander. He is my commanding officer, 
and he has been my mentor for the past 13 months since I completed my journeyman warcaster training at the Strategic Academy in Caspia. And can you render for the Tribunal the nature of the Commander's disappearance? Commander Sturgis is dead, Your Honor. Despite great effort, Lieutenant Jakes, the body of Commander Sturgis has not been recovered. How can you be certain of his death? <sighs> I killed him. I killed him? What? <laughs> War Machine Tactics, No Man's Land. It was all very straightforward. The Cadorans had advanced their front nearly all the way to the Dragon's Tongue, but they were spread thin. We would break their line and retake Fisherbrook, then move the 29th Brigade into the Thornwood, one battalion at a time by rail. There we would regroup with the 7th Infantry and mount an offensive to push the Cadorans north out of the forest. Commander Sturgis had sent me to Hartford's Ferry to relay his order that the rest of the 1st Battalion move up in preparation to deploy. All right, so at this point, you can choose this to be uh, a tutorial, so it's kind of on rails, and it'll show you, you know, basic movement and all that, but I, I'm going to skip that because I obviously know how to play, so I'm going to say no to that. Sergeant, report! Woody Reds came out of nowhere, Lieutenant. No warning. Scattered our line and cut us off from the command squad. Damn it. Where are you, bandit? Reds, left flank! All right, so we have some enemies off here to the side. We'll deal with them in just a moment. So those that are familiar with turn-based combat, this system will seem familiar. For those of you not, I'll explain it to you. So at the moment, we only have access to Lieutenant Allison Jakes, our hero. She has 16 hit points and she has four what are called focus points. Now, later on, we'll use that because we're a war caster. We'll use that to sort of fuel the abilities of guys like this over here. This is Bandit. He's a Charger uh, class Warjack. So he's kind of like a, a steampunk magic version of, say, like a, you know, a mech or something. <laughs> but they're pretty cool. And at least so far, um, to me, they're sort of like, I don't know, almost like semi autonomous pets. I mean, that seems kind of like how the storyline is. Um, and then they work with and on behalf of the Warcaster and they get their energy, I, you know, which is fueled by this thing called Focus uh, from or the excuse me, the Warjacks get their their energy from the Warcaster. So it's kind of this cool symbiotic relationship but right now. Bandit's deactivated and he's up there. We'll have to make our way to him. So we'll start with dealing with some of these guys off to the left. Now, if we look at a little bit closer to our characters, and this is one of the coolest things about this game, is that you can zoom all the way in, and the level of detail is really cool. Even when you're moving around and stuff, I, I, I this is part of um, War Tactics that I think is pretty neat. The game was built on the Unreal 4 engine, so it obviously has uh, the power to do these kinds of things. Now, right here, you'll see that 16 health represented as little squares over your icon. And that makes it easy when we look at, say, our enemies to know how much health they have. This guy has, what, seven, and this guy's got three, respectively. All right, so let's grab our hero. Now, we have a blue, a blue highlighted area, a yellow highlighted area, and a red. For those, again, for those of you familiar with, say, XCOM, are gonna know that you can use a quote-unquote blue move anywhere in the blue area, and you'll still be able to take an action. Anywhere in the yellow area is where you can use essentially your focus. So if you had Warcasters in that area, you'd be able to give them some of your focus points. Um, so this is, I guess, like, a you know, the, I don't know, area of focus or, er or charge area is what this would be. And then red basically means at the end is stop. So if you do a essentially a double move or run here, uh, you know, a move to here, and then run all the way here in one in one round, you wouldn't be able to do anything. So if I decide I want to run up next to this soldier up here right now, I'll get up there and that'll be the end of my turn. But I don't want to do that. I want to deal with some of these guys over here. So let's take a look at that. Now, I could run forward to this point. You see that blue shield that would give me extra defense against those guys. 
but I'm not in range to fire from there, and I kind of want to shoot at one of those guys this turn. I have four focus points, which will allow me to fuel my shots, so I'm going to go ahead and risk it, and I'm going to move here, and you'll see that now the gun icon appears over each one of their heads. So I'm going to right-click to move down there. You see me jump down, and then I'm going to use my hand cannon, and I can switch targets here. I can go to the next one, or I can go back. I'm going to stick on this target right here. And I have a 63% chance to hit and a 26% chance to crit without applying any focus, which I'm about to do now. So I'm going to use a point to boost the attack, and I'm going to use a point to boost the damage. And now you see I can do 5 to 7 damage with a possibility to crit, so... Even if I don't crit, there's a decent chance I'll kill this guy. Seven damage, he's toast. You call yourself a grave digger? Ma'am. Well, who are you planning on putting in those graves, Sergeant? Ours or theirs? Understood, ma'am. Now, I don't have control of those other soldiers yet, because this is the tutorial, so... And he's gonna run forward to do something, <laughs> while I'm left back here to deal with this guy. All right, so my turn is essentially over. I'm going to go ahead and end it. Now, my Warjack up there is being attacked because he's not powered up. And I haven't been, I haven't been able to get up there to reactivate him yet. All right, so now I'm going to do... Uh, let's see, I could do a melee attack and kill this guy pretty easily, but if I can still move and shoot at this guy, well, actually, I don't want to do that. If I move away right now, because this guy is a melee combatant, because he's got that axe, he's going to get an attack of opportunity against me, and I, so he'll, he'll get to strike at me if I move away. So I'm going to go ahead and do a, a melee attack. I'm going to do this. Uh, mechanical or mechanical blade and then I'm gonna power it up with focus and with boosted damage there we go he's toast and that ends my turn and I don't have access to anything else yet so I'll just end the turn Okay, they're doing a decent job killing those other guys, or hurting them anyway. Okay, let's go to my person. I need to run towards my Warjack. Gotta activate Bandit. Gotta get him up and running. Bandit, where is he? He's right there. Roger, Stuck in the fuss, I'm afraid. You left him? All due respect, ma'am. That Warjack ain't nothing but a pile of scrap iron when you're not here. Dodges is going to kill me. What's that, ma'am? Everyone form up on me now! Okay, so the Trencher Infantry and the Sarge have been added to my squad. Okay, great. So now I can control them too. So essentially what they're saying is, you know, hey, we're not going to guard this. I'm not going to risk our lives for this uh, Warjack because, you know, without you powering it, it can't do anything. So, you know, forget it. Which kind of makes sense, I guess, but... Yes, sir. Alright, now, we've got some abilities here. Let's see, we're gonna do... Ranged attack, we're gonna do... Actually, what we're gonna do here... Well, I've got a 95% chance to hit this guy. I could do combined ranged attack, where I had more than one soldier attack this target. But since I have such a high chance to hit anyway, and he's only got three health left, I'm just going to execute a ranged attack. There we go. And he's done. The other guy's only got three health, so let's go ahead and do ranged attack. And he's done. And that ends our turn. All right, now I'm gonna run over here to Bandit, like so. And right here, I'm gonna reactivate Bandit. Don't think you're sitting this one out. 
Not a word to Sturgis about this. Not so much as a whistle. <laughs> Let's make the commander proud! Alright, now there's some um, guys over here that are going to attack us, so let's go ahead. Let's see, I'm done with her turn. But these guys can do something, so let's see. Let's move up here a bit. Okay, he's done, and let's move him up a bit. And he's done. Let's end the turn. I think I'm just out of range where these guys, yeah. They had to move up, but they couldn't quite attack because they didn't have enough action points left. So that worked out well. Okay, now I allocate focus. This is what I was talking about. So we're in our yellow zone of influence. I can see my I can see my warjack. And I have four focus points. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to give him I'm going to give him three focus points. I'll keep one and I'll end the control phase. And now we, he has both a battle hammer and a, and a cannon. So I'm going to move up here where I have line of sight to that particular soldier in the front. I'm going to boost my attack here, so I've got an 84% chance to hit. Yeah. <laughs> he had a bad day. Now I'm going to shoot at the other guy, because I have enough focus points to shoot twice and boost the attack. And he had a bad day. <laughs> that was pretty cool. All right, let's see. Who else do I want to move? Uh, I can still move my character, so I'll do that. And end her turn. And not that I necessarily need to, but I'll put these guys back behind cover. Because why not? Go. And yeah, there's another guy inbound right there. Okay, in the turn. And we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to pass three focus points over to our Warjack, and we could do a, a melee, we could actually do a charge attack against this guy, that could be kind of fun. Let's see, what power attacks do we have left? Oh, we've got Slam, um, or we could just do like an actual charge attack. Let's do that, that's fun. <laughs> that was cool. Now, in truth, it probably would have been more efficient to just, you know, shoot the guy, but it was fun to do that. Okay, let's do hand cannon, boosted attack, execute. Okay, two damage, and then let's see, can we get a shot against this guy with these guys? We should be able to. Nope, can't see, doesn't have a line of sight. All right, what about you? Do you have line of sight from here? What about from here? You have line of sight? You do from here. Okay. Ranged attack. Eh, it's not a very good chance, but we'll take it. Oh, I did one point of damage. All right. In the turn. Did two points of damage to our Warjack, who can take it, no problem. And now, we'll just, like, smack this guy with the battle hammer and be done with him. Yeah, that's right. Look, I came back like I said I would. Everything worked out just fine. Man of war! Uh-oh. These guys are serious business, I guess. Yeah, all right. Okay, let's move over here. And done. Blimey. 
think this is, if I remember correctly, this isn't going to matter a whole lot here in a second, but... Yep. Commander Sturgis, I didn't expect you here. Lieutenant Jakes, what quality makes a warcaster more effective than every other soldier on the battlefield? Warjack, sir. The ability to mentally control and augment the power of Warjacks. Well then, when did you decide you didn't want to be a Warcaster anymore? It won't happen again, sir. <laughs> okay, so he was basically chastising us because we had left our, ch our Charger uh, Warjack forward in the camp and we were sort of fighting on our own for part of that battle without utilizing it. So it's like, well, are you a warcaster or not? And I was like, well, we are, but that's the way the mission was, so I couldn't change it, okay, Mr. Commander guy? <laughs> anyway, so here's kind of my, my thoughts on, uh, my thoughts on War Machine Tactics. So the pros are, since it's based on the Unreal 4 engine, it looks pretty good. I also like the game world as the more I read about uh, the Iron Kingdoms and the four major factions and kind of get more familiar with it. I really like the history that it's based on. Plus, I like I like this genre, kind of like the, the steampunk plus magic. I always have, so that's kind of right up my alley. The fact that it's a it's a relatively complex turn based tactical game, of course, is a plus for me. Now, whether or not you're a fan of that category, you know, I can't say, but it is for me. And the combat, I've gone through a couple of different missions now. The combat is generally fun, and the maps are varied enough to make it interesting. And certainly anyone that has played, you know, XCOM, or even games like Wasteland 2 or Fallout are probably going to be comfortable with the combat in this and like it. Now, having said that, it is not free and clear of issues. First off, it has some sound glitches. Sometimes when you load into an area, and I'll try to edit this out for you folks, but sometimes when you load into an area, there's like a spike in sound for no apparent reason. So that that kind of bugs me. The, the camera, though they have patched it and improved it over time, the camera sometimes does have does have problems. The voice acting is, is pretty rough in the in the single player game and the script itself. There are lines that are just I have to tell you, they're just so cheesy. And and while on one hand, I think to myself, well, maybe they were going for satire, uh, kind of like, say, Starship Troopers or something, right? They were really trying to go over the top. So it's it's it's, you know, sort of satire and you're, it's kind of tongue in cheek. And, and maybe it is. But if it's not, it's really horrible scripting. OK, so it's either one or the other. So if you want to give them the benefit of the doubt, you can say that it's over the top for a reason, you know, for for style. I, I don't know. Otherwise, it's super, super cheese. The UI is quite cumbersome and for new players, I think would be probably the biggest issue. The camera and the UI are going to be the biggest issues that new players, especially those that are not familiar with turn based combat, are going to have later on um, when you're utilizing your character and you're doing uh, certain actions, you basically do things before the round happens. So you do that and then you close out that action and then normal actions take place. So you're sort of like, well, do I ever get to control these other characters? And it can get quite confusing. As a matter of fact, me even trying to explain it to you is a little bit confusing. So that that's problematic. But I but I have to say, even though the reviews of this game have been mixed and some people have have been critical of it, I like the game. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, whether it has some blemishes or not, the question is, do you have fun with the game? And I do. And I've played several hours of it. I'm, I've played uh, four or five different missions and I really, really am enjoying it. So I'm going to continue to play the game. As always, I appreciate your comments and feedback. Thanks so much for watching. And until next time, I am Mal and I will see you later.